fun of the land. It allows us to go into areas that normally can't be entered and shoot from different angles. Like the inside of a Norwegian salmon. Or a trouser and its back pocket, as well as with grains of sand in it. A sweater. Playing cards. or a vacuum cleaner that hasn't been cleaned in a while. Today we will not only use this lens, we have another ultra macro lens that allows us to take a closer look and beyond that a microscope camera that magnifies objects 1000 times. Let the show begin. This paper here looks yellow to me but it doesn't actually appear yellow to you. The screen you are watching this video can only show red, blue and green lights. It never shows yellow light. There is no way to produce the yellow color spectrum on the screens. While I see a real yellow light in this room, you see a fake one. Since the wavelength of yellow light falls somewhere between red and green, all your computer or cell phone has to do is to send a little red, a little green light to the screen. If you approach your screen as close as 180 of 1 meter, the yellow light actually looks like this. If you look at the screen by squinting it up, or if I increase the blur a little bit, I can trick your retina again and you'll see yellow. Since our eyes cannot catch enough details, we see small red and green pixels as yellow. You probably didn't know that banknotes contain some iron in it. This is for safety reasons. Now we have a mixer and we will try to separate the iron from the inside. As I'm bringing the magnet closer, it's coming. The iron parts in it are decomposed. There are many more clues to understand if a dollar is real or fake. If we rub our finger on George Washington, we can get a sound. I'm feeling the thicker texture. Also, I have a normal paper. When I draw a line, I see the paint here doesn't spread equally. The beginning of the line is denser. When I do the same thing on the back note, the paint spreads equally. As we approach the dollar, we see that the lines on it are not perfectly sharp. The ink is scattered. 75% cotton, 25% linen. The Federal Reserve says the average lifespan of used $1 bill is 6.5 years due to wearing and tearing. Since I mentioned the markers, let's take a closer look at one of them. Green paints at the tip of the marker can be seen on a macro scale. Pens actually have a ball at the front and when a pen touches the paper, the ball inside it rubs against the ink and paint the paper as it moves. Everyday items are very different than thought on a macro scale. And bread. Its cratered structure looks like this up close. But what if it gets moldy? Sometimes the green parts of a moldy bread are plucked and the clean looking parts are eaten. But even though they are partially green, every part of these breads is moldy. There is no such thing as a clean part. Mold is a fungus and quickly spreads to every part of the bread. You can think of the long, branching, filamentous fungal structure called hyphae which is not visible to the human eye as the webs of the mold. Although we can't see, covering the entire bread back with spores of mold fungus is only a few hours process. This is a rosy flavored tea bag and the dissolution of it in the boiling water. This is a strawberry. Dozens of yellow dots on it are its seeds and they will give life to new crops by germinating. A freshly weaved spider webs. And this is a black letifera with sharp claws stuck to sticky webs, popularly known as black beetles. It starts moving when we get it out of the web. But since it likes darker places, it hates studio lights. And this is a ladybird. Most people probably don't know what their hidden wings under their shiny shells look like. A lifeless bee. If it were alive, we would hear the buzz of flapping wings 230 times a second. Its hair, eyelashes and mustache are seen. Bees have compound eyes. Compound eyes are a honeycomb-like structure consisting of thousands of eyes. We know it is female by its needle. Only females have a needle. The ones that are called honeybees usually die after singing creatures like humans because the skins of mammals are much thicker and multi-layered than invertebrates such as insects. Although the bee tries to pull back its needle, it doesn't succeed and as a result of the honeybee forcing it, the needle pulls out the internal organs and the bee dies. We are at the final chapter. I have a microscope camera here. It will get us 1000 times closer to the objects. Let's start with 50x close up first. You can see the patterns on a trouser. I will get even closer from 50x to 1000x now. You can see the pattern separately in an enormous size. Trousers actually look like this. A sweater at 50x. Now I'll get 20 times closer. It is 1000x now. Sweater looks like a hairball. 
and this is a t-shirt mostly made of cotton. Let's look at my palms at 50x. You can see every detail. Let's get 20 times closer. I'll wash my hands now for 20 seconds. I wonder if you can see any dirt after that. Here's my palm after washing it. Same dirt is still there. Unbelievable. We carry invisible dirts everywhere. They are part of our life. It is not visible to the naked eye. It shouldn't exist. Let's look at my hair. I'll start from 50x. Hair strands are like cables and the hair is like a pile of cable. Let's go for the beard. Interesting. It is just like the hair. Not even a week old. Let's take a look at a three day old beard. We can see the edges are sharp. It might have looked softer if it was older. I will get a close shave now. I wonder if you can see any detail after a close shave. Can we see anything after a close shave? I thought I got rid of this. But since it is very detailed, it looks like I need another shave. And the edges look even sharper now. And this is the moment when a drop of sweat forms in my hand during a long shot. Needle syringes are most people's fear. This is the moment a syringe enters my body. We looked at most objects in everyday life from different angles. Macro scale world was a different world. We are at the end of a personal experience video. We will continue to gain new perspectives with such videos and documentaries that we shot in Japan, Yukutia 